Hi guys, welcome to drawing timber joints in 3D. The first thing I want to say is timber joints belong to one of three categories. And they are framing joints, carcass joints and widening joints. Framing joints are often used for making furniture. If I was to look from the top, there's my eye, this rebate joint might look a little bit ugly, so I could flip them around. It's still a rebate joint, it's just drawn the other way up and it looks a lot neater. Frames are strong, but they're often covered with some sort of cladding or a piece of wood like this door. Carcass joints are like boxes or cabinets. They don't have an internal frame. So they're quite often made from sheet products, from wide sheets. And this is still a rebate joint. If we don't have a wide sheet, we might need to make one. Widening joints are used to assemble smaller pieces into one wide board. And a rebate joint will be quite effective at locking these pieces together. Let's get started the right way. We'll draw a 10 millimeter border and a title block. Here we see a butt joint side on. It looks neat, but it'll only support a little bit of weight. To make it stronger, we can carve into the second piece of timber. There's more gluing area and the little shoulder helps. A nail driven in would also help make it stronger. If we replace the nail with a screw, it will tightly clamp them together and make it stronger again. I could drill in and put a round piece of timber or dowel in to increase the strength. Or even better, a triangular piece of timber called a gusset glued into the corner. Very strong. So let's get started with a quick sketch. That's the bird's foot or the three isometric I call them splat angles. I'm going to draw the end of the piece of timber and then some quick lines off in that direction. I'm going to break them with that symbol. Now we'll come down with three lines. Oop, there's a little fix up. Now we're going to divide that line into three. I'm going to come up one third to the first mark and on my splat angles, off to the right and the left. I'm tidying this drawing up with a thicker pen. I suggest you use pencil drawn really lightly and then darken it in or firm it in with pencil. Oops, there's a fix up with liquid paper. Best to use pencil. So a bit of grain, a bit of color. Let's walk through it a bit slower. There's my starting point. I'm going to come up half a splat and out to the left. So those two lines I'm going to copy the long one out to the left and the center or vertical line. Now from three points, I'm going to come out to the right splat angle. I'm going to extend them if you want a longer piece of timber. Remember we divided that into three, come up to the one third mark and on the splat angles, left and halfway along the right. Let me just quickly erase that and come down. Don't forget there's a little piece that you can see just under there. All right, cool. So that's how easy it is to draw um, a piece of timber in isometric. This one I'm going to explode. Notice I'm measuring from the blip down from each of those three points. Here's the top of the next piece of timber we're drawing. From three points, I'm going to come down one splat length. This is the end grain design that we see. A little bit of wood grain. Now I'm darkening this drawing in using uh, a brown pencil if I was presenting this in an assignment or something like that. Color it evenly all over. Darken up the edge. Imagine it's in shadow. I'm darkening close into this line just to add a little bit of contrast. 
these dashed lines show how this exploded drawing would assemble. And now we are done. Thanks for joining me. See you again next time for another timber joint. And don't forget, if you need a splat, follow the links below. Now, practice.